Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will move to the next kingdom that is a uh, kingdom protista. So let us see what all organisms are included in this kingdom protista. First of all, they would include the eukaryotes. So for prokaryotes, we have dedicated one kingdom that was Monera. So now is the turn for eukaryotes. You, what are eukaryotes? Those who have specific membrane bound cell organelles and distinct nucleus. So if you look at the cell, everything will be well distinct with proper cell membranes for each cell organelle, be it a Golgi apparatus or a, a endoplasmic reticulum or a nucleus. So everything it will be distinct. Mostly unicellular. Okay, so in one era, everything was unicellular, but here in Protesta, mostly unicellular. I mean, there might be one or two which are not unicellular. Some are autotrophic while others are heterotrophic. So again, as far as nutrition is concerned, it is a mix. Some can prepare their own food while others depend on other organisms for their food. Prefer moist and aquatic habitats. Reproduce both sexually and asexually. So we will see how do, I mean, what are the methods that they adopt for their reproduction. So, we got an idea that in this kingdom, we are going to have unicellular eukaryotes. So, Monera was for unicellular prokaryotes and Protista is for unicellular eukaryotes. Now, it is said that this kingdom Protista acts as a link with all other higher kingdoms. Higher kingdoms in the sense fungi, plantae and animalia. So, those are the three higher kingdoms than Protists. So this protesta act as a link with those kingdoms. Now let us see how. Now, during very earlier days when I said like during the time when Linus came up with the two kingdom classification or during those days, it was not very easy for people to understand which organism falls into which kingdom. Right? So during those days, it was actually seen that there were a lot of organisms which looked very similar to plants. Some looked very similar to animals. So people earlier thought that they should be plants or they should be animals. But then later when they studied them even more thoroughly, they got to know that those organisms were not neither plants nor animals. Instead, they were protista. So we will see how there are organisms in this kingdom which resemble a lot to plants, some of them resemble a lot to animals, while some others resemble fungi. So that is why protista is considered as a link with other kingdoms. For example, there are some protists which are plant-like, that means they resemble plant in some or the other way. That example is algae. There are some types of algae, not all types of algae fall under protesta, but there are some types of algae like the brown algae, the red algae, they all fall under protesta. One important thing to note here is algae. Now in algae, you have algae in different colors. Now different colors of algae behave very much differently from each other. For example, if you consider blue-green algae, that is nothing but cyanobacteria. So it falls under Monera kingdom. When you talk about brown algae or golden brown algae or red algae, they all fall under protist. Whereas when you talk about green algae, they fall under plantain. So when you talk about algae, please, may, please remember this that not all algae falls under the plantain kingdom. So different algae have different characteristics because of which they are grouped under different kingdoms. So these algae were also considered to be plants in the early days when there was, there was no separate kingdom for protesta. But then later on thorough study it was found that they are not plants. So they fall under the protests and they are called plant-like protests because they resemble plants. So in this picture also you can see they look very similar to plants. 
Next was animal-like protists, for example, protozoa. So protozoa also fall under the category of protists. For example, amoeba, paramecium, euglena, they all have a lot of characteristics which resemble animals. For example, the way they intake their food, they take in solid food. So that is again a characteristic very similar to animals. That is why they are known as animal-like protists. That means they are not animals, but they have some features similar to animals. And the third one that is fungus-like protists. And under that category, we have slime molds and water molds. Whenever I use the word molds, the first thing that strikes your mind is a fungi. What is a mold actually? You would have seen that when a tomato or when an orange becomes rotten. What happens on a rotten orange? You'll see that the color of the orange changes. It gets covered with a, a creamish colored thing. Then gradually that turns black, right? So that are, they, those are nothing but molds. So these slime molds and water molds, because of their look, because of their appearance, they were mistaken to be fungus. But later it was found that they do not have all characteristics or all behavior similar to fungi. And that is why they have been put under protists and are known as fungus-like protists. So here in this picture also you can see the slime molds, which is the first photograph. This yellow colored. So here if you see, it looks very similar to those kind of fungi, right? The way fungi comes over decaying things. That is how it looks like. But actually it is a protist. So this is how protist acts as a link with the higher kingdoms, that is fungi, plantae and animalia. Now let us look at the different groups which we are going to study under protista. As we saw in case of Monera, we talked about the different types of bacteria like Archaebacteria, Eubacteria. So similarly in case of Protista also, we have divided this kingdom into five different groups and then we will study about each of the groups and their characteristics. So the five groups are Chrysophytes, Dinoflagellates, Euglenoids, Slime Molds and Protozoa. So these are the five groups which we are going to study now under Protista. The names are quite new and different and also difficult to remember sometimes. So if you want, you can remember it like this so that at least you can have uh, a clue to remember the names. Sometimes it happens that uh, the name Chrysophytes goes out of your mind. You don't remember at all what was that group which was under Protesta. So I, I'll give you a small clue here so you can remember it somewhat like this. Chris. Diana, protest, united, sports. So these are some simple words. So you can remember this in the form of a sentence, sentence like Chris and Diana protest against united sports. So it, it is easier to remember. So whenever you think of Chris, you remember chrysophytes. Whenever you think of Diana, you remember dinoflagellates. Protest is nothing but protozoa. You, the moment the word you comes, it's euglena. Sports is nothing but the slime modes. Right? Or you can say, you, Chris, Diana, protest in US. So U is for the euglenoids and S is for the slime molds. Right? So this is something which you can keep in your mind so that you can just remember the names. Okay. So now, thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.